Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a revision question on vectors. So let's take a look at the question. Question number five. Find the Cartesian equation of the plane through the points A having coordinates 1, 2, 5, B has coordinates minus 1, 0, 3, and C has coordinates 2, 1, minus 2. So let's see how this can be done. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So we have the coordinates of A, B, and C. Now, in order to work out the equation of the plane, and here's the formula in scalar product form. So the scalar product form for the equation of a plane. And the formula is r dot so it's r dot, the normal vector of the plane, n, and that's equal to capital P. So here is the scalar product form for the equation of the plane. And P, the scalar on the right-hand side of this formula, can be found by calculating the scalar product of the fixed point on the plane. So A is the fixed point on the plane, dotted with n, which is the normal vector for the plane. So it's worthwhile learning this result. Now if we go back to the question we need the equation of the plane, the Cartesian equation of the plane passing through these points A, B and C. So back to the paper and pen. Now in order to work out the normal vector, the normal vector i.e. a vector perpendicular to the plane can be found by working out AB cross AC. So to work out the normal vector n it's the vector AB cross the vector AC. So first things first, we need to work out these vectors AB and AC in order to work out this cross product and hence work out the normal vector for this plane. So firstly, AB. Now we have A, B and C in coordinate form. Let's convert them as vectors. So that means that the vector OA will be 1i plus 2j plus 5k. And let's convert B and C in vector form. So vector OB will be minus i plus 0j plus 3k. Last but not least, vector C. So OC will be 2i plus j minus 2k. So I've converted the coordinates for a, b and c in vector form. So I know the vectors oa, ob and oc and I need them to work out the vector ab as well as ac. Now here's the trick to work out the vector ab. The trick is it's going to be the vector o and it's o of the second letter the second letter is B, so O of the second letter, minus always O of the first letter, so the first letter is A. So let me repeat, so to calculate the vector AB, it's O of the second letter here, which is B, always minus O of the first letter being A. So vector AB, let's work this out. Vector OB we have as minus I plus 3J. So minus i plus 3j, or 3k rather, minus vector OA, which is i plus 2j plus 5k. So i plus 2j plus 5k. Now let's add the like components. So when I add the like components, add in the i components, minus i minus i is minus 2i. When I add the j components, I don't have a j component here, but minus 2j, that is the only j component we have. 3k minus 5k minus 2k. So that should be the vector ab. Now we need the vector ac, so let's work this out. So vector ac, remember the trick. To calculate the vector AC, it's O of the second letter, so it's O of C, always minus in the middle, O of the first letter being A. So let's go the extra step. 
OC we had 2i plus j minus 2k so 2i plus j minus 2k minus vector OA which we had i plus 2j plus 5k so i plus 2j plus 5k so if I add the like components, so if I add the i components, 2i minus i is i, plus j minus 2j is minus j, and minus 2k minus 5k is minus 7k. So that is what you should have for the vector AC. So I know the vectors a, b and a, c, so we're ready to work out this vector product or the cross product. Let me show you how to work out the cross product. So on the reverse, so a, b, cross a, c. So to work out the vector or the cross product, that can be found by considering the determinant of a three by three matrix. So we need to consider the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. Now this is how you would arrange your determinant. The top row are the unit vectors i, j and k. So always the unit vectors i, j and k for the top row. Second row of your determinant are the components of i, j and k in the vector AB as AB appears first. So in AB, let's remind ourselves, the components are minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. So let's include those. Minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. And you write the components in the order i, j and k. In the last row or the third row, these are the components of i, j and k in AC. So looking at AC, the components are 1, minus 1, minus 7. So let's include those. 1, minus 1, minus 7. That completes the determinant arrangement. Now let me show you how to expand that determinant. Now you can expand the determinant using any row or any column. I usually tend to use the first row and there are signs associated with the rows and the columns. And since I'm using the first row, the signs associated are plus, minus and plus. So let me use the first row to help me with this expansion. So let me show you how to expand. Using the first row, it's plus i multiplied by the determinant of a two by two matrix. And the elements of the two by two matrix for this determinant can be found by ignoring the row and the column containing i. So if I ignore the row and the column, containing i, the elements of the 2 by 2 determinant will be two, minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 minus 7. So I'll write down minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 minus 7. Let's continue along the row. So minus j minus j multiplied by and now to calculate the elements of this 2 by 2 determinant, we need to ignore the row and the column containing j. So if I ignore the row and the column containing j, we can see minus 2, minus 2, 1, minus 7. So minus 2, minus 2, 1, minus 7. Finally, plus k. So plus k multiplied by and if we ignore the row and the column associated with k so ignoring the row and the column for this determinant the elements would be minus 2 minus 2 1 minus 1 so minus 2 minus 2 1 minus 1 So let me show you how to expand these two by two determinants. So we'll have i, so i multiplied by, 
first we multiply the elements along this diagonal, highlighted in red. So if I multiply these elements, minus 2 times minus 7 is plus 14. And it's always minus in the middle. And then we multiply the elements along the opposing diagonal, highlighted in green. So if we multiply these elements along the green diagonal, minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2, plus 2 with a minus is minus 2. Minus the j, open a bracket. So remember the idea, first multiply the elements along this diagonal in red. Minus 2 times minus 7 is plus 14, always minus in the middle. Then multiply the elements along this diagonal, the opposing one, highlighted in green. 1 times minus 2 is minus 2, together with this minus is a plus 2. Plus the k, plus the k, open a bracket. First multiply the elements along this diagonal, remember. So along the red diagonal, minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2, always minus in the middle. Then multiply the elements along the opposing diagonal in green. 1 times minus 2 is minus 2, with this minus will be a plus 2. So let's go one stage further, let's simplify. 14 minus 2 is 12, times i is 12i. 14 plus 2 is 16, 16 times minus j minus 16j. 2 plus the 2 is 4, times k plus 4k. So that should be the solution for AB cross AC. So remember, AB cross AC, so if we go back, AB cross AC will give us the normal vector for this plane. So to work out the normal vector, we need to work out AB cross AC. We've done just that. So let's make a note that n, the normal vector, is 12i minus 16j plus 4k. Now, if we go back to the question, we need the Cartesian equation of the plane through these three points. Now, going back to the paper and pen, now the plane concerned passes through all three points. So when it comes to the formula, especially to work out capital P, the scalar, Bearing in mind that A is a fixed point on your plane, we can take A as OA, OB or OC, as all of these points lie on your plane. They're, these are all fixed points on your plane. So I'm going to take the vector A to be OA. So my vector A is going to be OA. And let me remind myself, OA is I plus 2J plus 5K. So i plus 2j plus 5k. And to work out p, it's a dot n. So it's the vector a dotted with n. So vector a is i plus 2j plus 5k. Taking the scalar product of that with the normal vector that we found, which is 12i minus 16 j plus 4k now to work out the scalar or the dot product all we do is we multiply the components of i j and k and then we add so if we multiply the corresponding components then we add so firstly with the i components we have 1 times 12 always add with the j components when I multiply we have 2 times minus 16 again add as for the k components plus 5 times plus 4 so remember to work out the dot or the scalar product multiply the components and then add let's continue 1 times 12 is 12 2 times minus 16 is minus 32. 5 times 4 is 20. So when I go one stage further to simplify, you'll have 12 
minus 32 plus 20. So that should give us a value of P which is zero. So zero is the scalar for P for the right hand term. Now, with this being said, we have the scalar P, we have N, the normal vector, and bearing in mind the scalar product equation of the plane is R dot N is equal to P, let's substitute the data into this formula, let's work out the scalar product form of the equation first. So, let's continue. So the equation of the plane, so it's R dot N, is equal to capital P. So it's R dot, the normal vector N we had 12i minus 16j plus 4k. And that's equal to the value of the scalar, which is zero. Now, if we go back to the screenshot, we need the Cartesian equation of the plane. So we're nearly there. So we need to work out the Cartesian equation. Back to the paper and pen. Now, Cartesian means an equation in terms of x, y, and z. Now, to get the Cartesian equation, R, remember, is the position vector of any point on your plane. So, if I take R as x, i plus y, j plus z, k. So, we're going to have, as a result, R, which is x, i, plus yj plus zk dotted with and n n we had so let's copy that down 12i minus 16j plus 4k and that is equal to zero on the right now we need to evaluate that scalar product on the left hand side so remember the idea, to work out the dot or the scalar product, all we do is multiply the corresponding components and then we add. So if I multiply the i components, x times 12 plus multiplying the j components, y times minus 16 plus, as for the k components, z times 4 which is equal to zero on the right. So if we get rid of the brackets, 12 times x is 12x, minus 16 times y, minus 16y, four times z, four z, that is equal to zero. So that ends this question, sadly, and that also ends this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you're not familiar with the concepts that I've used to solve this question, I will provide links to the videos explaining the concepts. And these videos will have additional examples in them and I'll provide the links in the description below. However, if you enjoyed the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related exercises and I hope to see you again. Thank you.